Hello, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by and checking out my videos. And if you are a recurring viewer or a subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support of my channel. I really appreciate you all being here. Uh, today, as of filming, it is Sunday, April 16th. So it is time for a weekend reading update. So I thought I would go over a couple of the books that I'm currently reading and then what my reading plans are moving into next week. So I don't have any completed reads from last week. It was a little bit of a slower reading week for me, but I made some good progress in my current reads. So I will uh, show and talk about those. Uh, but this will be a little bit of a shorter video than my typical uh, reading updates, but I wanted to put something out nonetheless. So starting with a update of what I am currently reading, um, I have two books that are currently uh, being read sort of simultaneously. The first is The Collected Fictions of Borges. This is the Penguin uh, Deluxe Edition translated by Andrew Hurley. And I'm reading this along uh, with Anne Novella for our reading event, Classics and Company. Um, if you're not familiar with Classics and Company, it is a year-long reading event hosted by Anne Novella and myself uh, for the entire year of 2023, reading eight different works of classic literature. And uh, this is the pick for April through the middle of May. If it sounds like something that you would like to join in on, I'll leave a link to our Discord server down below, which is completely free to join. There's no strings attached. You don't have to be a part of all eight books. You can pick and choose what you want to read along with us. You can just stay for the discussion and not even for the readings necessarily. Um, it's very casual, uh, very, very informal, and just having fun discussing what we are reading. So Borges is for April into the middle of May. And I am, I'm, I'm a decent way in. I'm, a, I'm a, about... 10 or 15 uh, stories in so far and my initial reaction has not changed which is I have not been immediately uh, grabbed by Borges I have been somewhat confused by his story and by his stories and by his narrative structures so I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with it um, it was not what I was expecting it, it did not really pull me in right away and I'm left with somewhat of a feeling of confusion with his writing and from a couple of the other videos that I've seen about people on booktube talking about Borges and some of the stuff that I've read I don't think I'm the only one who feels that way uh, but it's certainly something that I'm, I'm hoping to overcome just by reading more of his works and then also with the excellent discussions that we've been having on our discord server for classics and company a lot of our readers insights have been helping as well uh, but this is still one that i'm not necessarily um, sort of falling in love with but it's one that i am working hard to um to get into and to sort of have it click for me um just because it's, it's not doing that yet uh, but I'll keep keep on with this one. It goes through the middle of May, so I'm taking my time with it. About two to three short stories a day. Um, sometimes no stories. I haven't read anything in, in here today, um, and I probably won't this weekend, but I'll make up for it kind of going throughout next week, maybe reading an extra story or two uh, next week to sort of catch up. Because, uh, again, it's very... Um, it's very in informal. We don't have to read. We don't all have to read two short stories a day or three short stories a day for classics and company. It's really reading at your own pace. So um, that is really nice. So that is one of one of the books that sort of will be going on through the rest of this month and then through half of May. And then uh, the other book that I have uh, going on that I started on Monday is Patrick O'Brien's Master and Commander. This is book one in his Jack Aubrey series, and I believe it's book one of 20 or 22, 23, something like that. Um, it's a lot of books. It's a really, really long series, um, which I'm actually very excited about because I am really enjoying this first book. I am very close to being done. I have under 100 pages left, so I'm hoping that maybe between today and tomorrow I'll get this finished, maybe even tonight if I can be uh, really stealthy with my reading and, and get it done. Um, but I'm also not trying to rush it because I'm really enjoying the story. And so I'm not rushing, I'm not, I'm not rushing the finish on this one uh, because I, I do want to savor it and make it last. This is really one of the first uh, sort of dedicated naval books that I have read. Um, I have read uh, Jack London's Sea Wolf, which is sort of nautical, um, not to the extent that uh, Master and Commander is. And of course, 
Moby Dick is very much maritime, but it's it's whaling. Whereas this is this is about a a British uh, a British naval vessel during the Napoleonic Wars. So a totally different setting uh, from anything that I have read, any fictionalized accounts of. I've read very little even um, sort of historically about this period, uh, about uh, sort of the naval aspect of the Napoleonic Wars. So this has been really, really interesting, very enthralling. The writing is very, um, it's very slow paced. It's not very action packed. It's very dialogue heavy. Um, it's certainly very conversation heavy. Um, lots of characters, a very big cast, but very um, sort of, so sort of the ensemble cast feel. We have the the whole crew of the ship. We hear from quite a lot of the shipmates. Um, of course, um, our our main character Jack Aubrey is the uh, sort of the, the center of the story. But we get lots of backstory on lots of other characters as well. So a really enjoyable read. Um, very much. Um, it very much builds on itself. So when I first started it, for the first couple of days of reading it, actually, I felt like I wasn't really connecting with the story or with the characters, and I felt things were were moving very, very slowly. But after sticking with it for a while, after I got through about the first 100 pages, everything locked in, and it became this very atmospheric, immersive read, which has been really enjoyable. So I am going to get the second book, and maybe I'll even go ahead and get the third book and just sort of have these going on in the background uh, because they're really great. I've also been listening to the audiobook um, borrowed from my local library when I haven't been able to actually read the print and paper copy. And it works really well as an audiobook as well. Uh, so this one I'm hoping to finish in the next couple of days. Like I said, I'm not going to rush it, but also I am very, very close to the end on this one. And um, I'm wanting to see where the story goes. So I will most likely finish this in the next couple of days. Uh, then I have one that I need that that needs to become a currently being read, and that is the Burton Raffle translation of Beowulf for my Beowulf in April buddy read that I'm doing along with Steve Donahue. So technically, I was supposed to have this already read by today to then film a video for it, and that did not happen. So the there will be no Beowulf video today. However. Uh, I'm hoping to have that video out sometime at the beginning of next week, either uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, preferably. Um, so we'll see if I can make that happen. And so I do, I do apologize for the delay on that. But this is the third translation that we will be that we have read so far for our uh, Beowulf read along. We started with the Tolkien translation, then we did the Michael Alexander translation, which was put out by Penguin Classics. Then this is the Burton Raffle translation, and I have the Signet Classics edition, which is this super tiny, tiny mass market paperback. It's really, really small really small print, but uh, I absolutely love the cover design. I think it's, 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 it's excellent. So that's why I went ahead and got this smaller edition, even though it's, it's not the easiest thing in the world to read. You have the print, how it kind of gets crammed down into the, the crease there and you can't really, you know, get to it very accessibly. However, um, it's worth the pains because I love the cover. So I do apologize for not having this video out today. Um, I need to finish up reading this. I did start it. I am, I believe, on page 20. Yes, on page 20 um, of, of about 100 pages or so. So hopefully in the next couple of sittings, I will have this done and I will have the video up and posted for it as well. Um, in the meantime, Steve has posted a video for... Um, um, for the Burton Ravel translation today, actually, and it is excellent. So if you are just really desperate to hear about the uh, Burton Ravel translation, and um, feel free to go over to his channel and watch his video because it is excellent. Uh, then for my reading plans moving into next week, I have two different books that I am trying to decide um, th decide between. So the first is Barchester Towers by Anthony Trollope. And I just received this copy from Thrift Books a couple days ago. And um, I'm really eager to get to this one. I read The Warden, which is the first book in the Barchester series, uh, which I believe is quite a long series actually. And I really enjoyed The Warden, very slow, slow paced, with a, you know, a little bit of drama, a little bit of, uh, you know, just a little bit of everything that makes, 
that makes Trollope su such a joy to read. Um, I really enjoyed the character, the character driven nature of the story, very sort of slow moving plot points, but never becoming boring, uh, which I think is a really, for, for me, I really enjoy sort of immersing myself in a book with the characters and for the characters. And then the plot sort of doesn't need to be super strong if I enjoy the characters and if I enjoy their dialogue and their conversations. And in The Warden, that, that was exactly the case. The plot's not flashy. It's not incredibly um, action-packed or active, it's, but it sort of it pulls you in and you become, um, you become a, a member of the community. And it's a really uh, just very enjoyable, atmospheric read. And so I'm I'm, I'm hoping that the Barchester Towers will provide the same feeling. So this is uh, this is one that I am most likely going to go with, but, th but the second option I'll, I'll show here is also very tempting, and that is Nelson, Love and Fame by Edgar Vincent. And this is a, this is a biography of Lord Nelson, who is a figure that appears, um, at least is named quite frequently in Master and Commander. And so um, I feel sort of pulled to read this one to get the historical, um, you know, to, to sort of... Um, to sort of fill that that history void that I need for this time period. And also this is a biography that has been sitting on my shelf for about two years now, unread, untouched, basically unopened. Um, so I, I definitely feel like I need to crack this one open and, 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 and read it just because it's been sort of unread for so long. And it's a very interesting subject matter to me and a figure that I, I know basically nothing about um, or next to nothing about and would certainly like to fix that. So I have to decide between, uh, between the two of these for next week. They're both actually about the same uh, when it comes to page count. Um, the books are just a little bit thicker because the print in the Nelson biography is larger and there's also quite a large note section in here as well, which is um, sort of the, the trick with biographies. They often look quite quite bigger than they actually are once you um, remove the notes in the bibliography sections. The actual biography portion is never actually as big as the book itself is, uh, whereas Barchester Towers here, this whole book is the novel. There is there's no notes. Um, there's a very brief introduction. But other than that, the very last page of the book is, uh, the last printed page in the book is the last page of the story. Uh, so I have to decide between uh, the two of those. Um, and whichever one I do end up deciding, I will then um, uh, talk about next week in my reading update. Uh, but that is all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, feel free to leave a comment down below if you would like, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now and happy reading.